All right. Listen, let's get, we're going about to get praying. Blessing God today. All right. Um, Father God, we just thank you for today. Father God, we just thank you for uh, this time that you're going to uh, dwell and be with us. Um, lead us, guide us, protect us, God. Teach us uh, new things in your word. Give us a fresh, a fresh uh, anointing, a fresh word, Father God. And we just thank you and we praise you and thank you for all of what you're doing today. We ask all these things to be done in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. All right, man. Listen, man. Welcome back. Hey, thank you, everybody, for coming through today. Um, just uh, want to honor the Lord and how you know He's moving us and um, and He's doing it, man. He, you know, listen, man. This is you know His move. You know, we are His people and we are in His group. So, listen, man. We just thank God for being um, dwelling amongst us in the land of the living. You know what I mean? With us. And um, listen, man, we're gonna get um, we're gonna get right into it. Um, listen, um, good announcements. Um, we're moving forward. God has really been just blessing us, really, me and my wife. Um, the word we're gonna be having today is gonna really be kicking off from uh, a word that my wife really had just recently preached on her Bible study. Um, her Bible study was amazing this past Thursday. Um, and it definitely was uh, this uh, what her Bible study is called the School of the Prophets, and it's basically just giving um, a prophetic uh, uh, edge, you know, giving teaching, you know, the prophetic through the Bible, through the Word. And uh, this last past uh, uh, lesson was the reward of the prophets, you know, prophets reward, and just really talking about how you know, as you know, us as servants of the Lord us as prophets and people that really serve in, 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 in the kingdom of God, how sometimes, you know, we can give, 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 but we really need to know how, you know, how the Lord see our giving. What does the Lord, you know, what is the, the reward for the prophet? One, it is the Lord, but also just, you know, um, just, it's, you, know you know, when you're blessing people, that is the reward of the prophet, but when they're blessing you back, you know, that's them blessing you back from what they feel that, you know, listen, God blessed me through what you blessed me with, you know, so it's a reciprocation and God consistently blesses them for being obedient. But um, today we're definitely going to be talking about blessed is the poor in spirit, man. And it's really, I feel like it's really just um, just uh, uh, understanding of leading and guidership of what God is calling us to and um, really of what he has us to do um, according to the scriptures. I really definitely want to make sure that we're really being guided by the word of God and that the word of God is really being, you know, really guiding, you know, our behavior, you know what I mean? It's really changing, you know, shaping and molding how we view, how we walk, how we really view everything and that we want to live, move, and have our being in his word, you know? Um, my beautiful, beautiful first lady over here. Look at, you know, look at the, look at the, look at the beautiful first lady over here. Come on, baby, come on. I'm going to slide out the way. <laughs> yeah. All right. What you, what, what you got for us today? All right. Blessings, God. Hopefully, I can hear me with the. I'm thinking about turning off that thing. Um, but today, we're just going to worship. It is a little hot. Um, I'm going to turn off my mic and see how it goes. Because we got lights. <laughs> Mm -hmm. turn, turn on that one and turn off this one. Whoa, Jesus. Okay, that's that's fine. Right here. Perfect. Can you tint that one? Hold on, Papa. My son's trying to be our media crew. Perfect. Okay, that's perfect. Better. Yes. Better. Better. All right, we're gonna sing a quick song, one song. And we're going to worship God, and we're going to enjoy God, and then I'm going to be out your way, and then God is going to pitch, and we're going to keep it moving. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to bring some songs. I got, you know, I'm just getting, you know what I mean? Listen, we don't get our song, so say the songs to the Lord. You know, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. The kids are here, y'all. So. Um, so, you just, uh, go ahead, baby. 
be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified in the heavens. Be glorified in the earth. Yeah. 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 Be glorified in this temple. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, be thou glorified. Be glorified, be glorified in the heaven. Be glorified in the earth. Be glorified in the temple. Sing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Be thou glorified. Back to the top and be glorified. Hey, hey, hey. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Hey. Be glorified. Hey. Be glorified. Come on. Hey, come on. Be glorified hey. in the heavens. Yeah. Be glorified in the earth. Be glorified. Be glorified in the temple. Sing Jesus. 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 Be thou glorified. Be glorified, as I'm be glorified in the heavens. Yeah, yeah. Be glorified in the earth. Be glorified, be glorified in the temple. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Be thou glorified. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes. Yes, right. let God be glorified. All right. All right. Look at the first lady looking all beautiful. My beautiful queen over here, right? God is good, right? Yeah, we in here, man. Definitely. You have any other? Or, yeah. Okay, first. All right. All right. Listen, I'm going to drop, drop some, you know, some music on you guys because, you know, listen, man, your boy, you know, I sing, I try to get the, the, the harmonizing going on here and there, but listen, man, I rap unto the Lord. That's my gift, you know, and give my gift unto the Lord. So listen, we're going to give um, praises and blessings to the Lord. We got one of my peoples over here. What's going on, Ray Ray? Hey, what's going on? And we in here, man. Listen, we're going to um, just get to the get to it. I mean, and really just, uh, just uh, praise God today, man. Um, just going to hit you with two songs, and I'm going to get out your way. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 yo, I wanna go high, yeah, yeah, do you wanna go high, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yo, the joy is in the journey, I gave my life to Christ, man, he got full control, he's the power of eternity, higher power, man, he owns me, yo, he's on the throne, see, yo, I'm not a throne, word is born, serve him brotherly. Keep that thing is good to me and let it go and let it be and let go in the God, man, as he keep on building me. Holy man is shaping me, a vessel man is taking me. I'm the clay and he's holding me in the pottery. Father, yo, we gotta be moving like you wanna see you stand in pain and I see you with you. And I wanna see you stand up in the views with the dudes. Woman of the seats, I wanna praise you to the dudes. I look in the streets, diligent my technique. Pray and steady, I'm a seat. The spirit is filling, it's willing, but the flesh is weak, so the flesh killing and drilling. I gotta die to me. My desire. 
higher speed, the Messiah. I can higher speed, come with me, cause I wanna go higher. And I'm on a mission to ever see my Messiah. The Lord make it God coming down like a fire. Chipping up the flesh, yes, so they go spy. That's the come with me, say higher, higher. Come with me, say higher, higher. Come with me, say higher. Higher. And I'm on the mission to see my Messiah. Process in progress, progressive process. Subjecting my flesh to death as I step. Closer they got a step. Harder they catch my breath. WG like my breath. Not a lot of time left. Gonna do in my mindset. Down in the deeper steps. Reaping the silver debt. Burning the ever flesh. Reflecting the retrospect. Recollect some regrets. Carrot the defects. Carrot the seek the reset. Rolling with ease. Wrapped the body. Burn the ease set. Exegetical exegest. Bitch, press the holy text. Feel the Lord. And respect, holy work, you're correct, Lord, to my dark side, like it was an essence, cause confessing confess, confessing my nonsense, growing in wisdom, understanding the knowledge, increasing my confidence as it comes in my confidence, if you want to see the Lord, lift your eyelids, come with me, cause I want to go higher, and I'm on a mission to deceive my Messiah, the glory of God coming down like a fire. Chipping on the flesh, yeah. Holy Ghost, by the sun, come with me, say higher, higher. Come with me, say higher, Come with me, say higher, higher. And I'm on a mission to deceive a Messiah. The storm doesn't hit now, I'm walking the long mouth. The Lord came to change me, he won't change the trial. Purify me like gold, taking the draw stop. The worship is spirit and truth up in my lifestyle. So pain, man, is necessary. Suffering is optional. Option that I'ma choose. Obey, that's what I'ma do. Lead people, Lord, in your way. Yes, I follow you. Consumed by your fire, flesh ablaze like the barbecue. Going up the ladder, angels ascending and descending. I see my Lord, see my sins and my knees bending. I'm a broken vessel, the pieces they need mended. You cleanse me, and it's me that he's sending. Oh, me taking the taking a Christ attire, taking my place. He says the Holy Ghost Father, purified by the fire, as I go higher. Only if your hands and your heart can see the Messiah. So come with me, cause I wanna go higher. And I'm on a mission to receive my Messiah. The Lord make a God coming down like a fire. Chipping up the flesh, yes, so they go spider. Come with me, cause I wanna go higher. And I'm on a mission to receive my Messiah. The Lord make a God coming down like a fire. Been on the flesh, that Holy Ghost God is to come with me, say higher, higher, come with me, say higher, higher, come with me, say higher, higher, and I'm on a mission to see on the side, come with me, cause I wanna go higher, come with me, cause I wanna go higher, yeah, 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 yo, we wanna go high, 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 high. Yes, God, Lord, we want to go higher in you. We want to just consistently, consistently worship and praise, really consistently grow, go higher in the Lord, man. Listen, man, we're going to just consistently go higher in the Lord. Now, I got two songs. They got higher, right? And it's like, that's a mindset. That's like higher is like a nap, right? And this next song is called Elevation, right? And I had a friend say, yo, how do you make songs that's about, you know, that's like the same? Because one is a mindset, right? You can make a decision that don't mean you actually did it, but but the other one is an action, it's a verb, you know. You know, so elevation means you're actually going there, you know, you're actually starting to actually go higher and elevate in the Lord, man. So listen, man, this other song is called Elevation, man. I hope you're blessed by it. Um, let's get it. Hey. Let's go like this. Let's go like this. This is elevation of our elevation. This is elevation of our and I'm dwelling on a higher habitation. We wait patient for the final destination. Elevation. This is elevation. I'm young, it's an eight, higher fire flaming. My desire, see the Messiah, higher I'm aiming. I won't leave man the same way that I came in. Salvation, break it down in terms of the name, man. Man in itself can do nothing to save him. Jesus can to save man, rearrange and change him. When I start to thinking, then I'm starting to praise him. But it's kind of anticipation, 
the sound of them generating and soothing the confusion and hesitation. All creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. You dreaming in Roman day, man. Elevation, it needs some explaining. I was in the pit and I met his amazing grace and this love and grace and I started levitating. I'm elevating to my future presentation, deuce. Elevation, this is elevation. Oh, elevation, this is elevation. Oh, man, I'm loving on a higher habitation. We wait patient for the final destination. Elevation, this is elevation. Oh, elevation, this is elevation. Oh, and I'm dwelling on a higher habitation. Uh, uh. Who can ascend to the holy hill of the Lord? Only the ones with clean hands and a pure heart. Lord, I need you more. My knees at the floor. I see in the soul. Leave me your all. I perceive it as raw. I'm with the seven like it's my Bible is war. Yo, my Bible is my rifle, man. I really go hard. I ain't no body, so no top. Man, they really the fall. What's the Bible? We provide, man. I'm really getting born. Yo, it's Bible. I remind you, man. He died for all. We need to be broken up like breaking the bone apart. Got a short compass and the bone in the bone apart. Need to be transformed, but looting the inner parts. Casting the imagination, I'm catching the all thoughts. Need to be eagerly seeking, feeling like then the start team, huh? Cause you're falling out of just marsh, new things, breaking forth like baby may and marsh, huh? Elevation, this is elevation, but huh? elevation, this is elevation, huh? Man, I'm falling on a higher habitation. We wait patient for the final destination. Elevation, this is elevation, huh? Elevation, this is elevation, huh? Man, I'm falling on a higher habitation. For a fire. God and go up on Satan up. Elevation, 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 elevation. Yo, we going up in the Lord, man. Listen, man, I really just want to speak this, man, prophetically that go, man. It's a new season. God is doing a new thing. It's a behold, God do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Do you not understand it? Listen, man, we're going to be knowing God is taking us up higher in Him, higher in His presence, higher in His spirit. I in his teaching, in his learning, and actually in his service, man. So listen, man, listen. No matter where you are, man, listen, God is going to be elevating you higher up. We just, like I said, we have to have a mindset to want to go higher. And at the end of the day, once we have that mindset of wanting to go higher, he will elevate you, man. So listen, man, I just thank God, man. Hallelujah. God, thank you. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for honoring us, Lord. We just thank you. We honor the Lord. He says, he says, last week we read the scripture and it says, the Lord of the Sabbath. He is Lord of the Sabbath, meaning he, he made this day for us and for himself and for us to just be able to you know, relax, chill, and, and, and enjoy each other and him in his presence, man. So I just thank you, man, guys, for coming and just enjoying us today, man. Hey, what's going on, sis? Hey. And we um listen, man. We about to get into this word, man. You know we um we not gonna um without any further ado, um um we definitely um gonna get in this word, man. Um, God really just been really uh, working on my heart and my spirit about you know about um just being lined up with Him and His word. Um, sometimes you know we can have things that we want to do. But that doesn't necessarily line up with what he wants us to do and how he wants us to move. And um, and now and I've been and I've been through that a lot, man, in my in my walk with the Lord, you know. And I had to, you know, repent and start learning that. Listen, man, it, you know, listen. He is my father, man. I'm not, you know, he's the one that's guiding me. I'm not guiding him, you know. Um, I definitely pray and ask him for things. But also, you listen, man, you know, as like a, a caring parent, like a caring father, you know, he says yes or no. But um, there's things that he requires and wants from his children and actually, you know, literally necessarily, you know, demands it in a sense. You know, so, you know, I really want us to really um, look at some of the things, you know, because sometimes we focus on things that he really don't care about and we kind of negate the things that he does care about, you know. So I really want us to really get this mindset understand it says blessed are the poor you know um i know listen man you know there's a scripture in the bible that's you know it was a time where jesus you know was uh basically being uh prepared for his death he had his his disciple mary magdalene and she actually was pouring oil uh from the alabaster box on him and judas sent to him whoa that you know that's an expensive amount of stuff it says that could have been sold and used for for the poor. And then Jesus 
said, the poor shall be with you always. And at that time, he said, but I won't be, right? You know, but like, you know, that once I really dived in, that's something that is scriptural throughout the Bible, that at the end of the day, no matter what time and time frame you're in, the poor was always going to be with us and is with us at all times. We have situations where you see people that's homeless, you see people that's poor, you know what I mean? But poor doesn't necessarily mean you're homeless. But at the end of the day, you know, when I had to learn and understand what does poor mean, poor means that you are lacking the Father, lacking the Lord, you know what I mean, in your life. I had, it was a time in my life where I was poor, where I had, you know, I was poor in spirit, whereas that I was down, you know, I was out, you know, I was going through different situations, and I was poor. I didn't have, you know, the, 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 the Lord in my life to really, what, bring my spirits up, really, you know, or to go to when I had, you know, when I was in need, or, you know, for direction. If I didn't know where to go, you know what I mean, where, you know, to go to to pray or go into the word or go, you know, to spiritual leaders or to my brother and sister in Christ that, you know, is connected even more and they really, you know, give me a good word from the Lord, right? You know, so understanding, um, there, you know, I really want us to understand that, listen, there's a scripture that talks about how, you know, how blessed the poor is and we need to understand why, the, you know, why it says blessed, blessed are the poor, you know what I mean? It's one translation, you know, one scripture that says blessed the poor in spirit. So we're about to jump into it and get into it and really um dive and really see, you know, listen, what does the Lord require of us? What does he want? You know, how does he, you know, what how does he want us to to uh to, to move and what does he want us to require us to do for the poor? What is that? You know what I mean? A lot of times we see people and we like, listen, I'm not going to uh give them money to help they they addiction and da 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 da. But listen, man, we, you know, we got to really, um, I had to start, you know, God changed my mind frame and it's deeper than just giving them money. You know what I'm saying? It's deeper than just, I'm going to just throw these arms at you, throw this, you know, this couple of cents, dollar or whatever, or just buying you some food. It's deeper than that, man. Um, although it, it is a blessing, you know what I'm saying? But also we have to be very careful about how we treat the poor, how we, you know, view them how we you know what we do to them you know what i'm saying and how you know in a matter of what we're doing you know so let's dive into it and um my, my, my first scripture you know two you know scriptures that i'm really going to be building off of you know and then we're going to just go and dive in some more other you know some meat you know <laughs> right so we in matthew right um this is the man the gospels um the synoptic gospels meaning that they definitely you know they they synchronize with one another. They have, you know, similar things, just a little bit different because at the end of the day, you know, they heard the Lord, you know, but sometimes, you know, people, you know, they hear what they want to hear. They forget what they want to forget, but they remember what they need to remember, right? Um, so definitely, um, um, definitely uh, we're going to dive into Matthew 5, 3, and we're going to go from 3, and we're going to read the Beatitudes. And then we're going to really focus on three and six, right? So check this out. This is uh, Jesus, you know, and this is the Sermon of the Mount. So here we go. Uh, Matthew 5, right? It says, and seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain and he was seated. His disciples came to him. And then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you, right? Now, listen, I want to jump to Luke 
that has a similar similar version of the Beatitudes, but I kind of like more of the way that he kind of was definitely uh, speaking and talking about what uh, the same Beatitudes, but he kind of left, I guess, left out uh, some of the, you know, some of it, but I like the way that it was translated, right? Right? Luke 6, 20, right? It says, then he lifted up his eyes towards his disciples and said, blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled, right? And I love the way that I was saying because it really speaks to exactly what I really want to talk about is that, listen, God has a heart for the poor, right? Right? You need to understand that, that it doesn't necessarily mean monetary gain, money, right? But it can be, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have, uh, 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 you know, clothes, or, but it can but the main thing is a person is poor when he does not have God. Why? Because he says, you know, that, you know, the Lord, the Lord is, the, is an inheritance. He says he's the, the God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You know, our God made everything, <laughs> right? To understand that, listen, if someone doesn't have any money, but they have a relationship with the Lord, they're not even poor because why the Lord ascends somebody or send something or, or, bless, or put it in somebody's spirit to come and bless you. So at the end of the day, no matter what you're going through, right? If you're going through a poor season or a poor situation, God will always be there. And it says, those that hunger, the first one it says, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled, right? But I like this part also, because it's, it's, it's the, 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 the first translation we read, was definitely talking about definitely talk about spiritual things. So it says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for though that is the kingdom of heaven." I mean, and when I really had to study into that, is really to understand that. Listen, I have nothing else but the Lord, right? So listen, no matter what I have—house, car, jewels, money, clothes—with all these different things, if I don't have the Lord and I have all these things, I really didn't got nothing because these things can go like <laughs> like that, right? But if I got the Lord, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm good. I'm all right. Why? Because I always know that no matter what, I can go to him. I can go to the father who has me. You know what I mean? He said he, he knows all. He knows the hairs on my head. He knows everything. He knows me. You know what I mean? Even in, in, in my first uh, introduction to the Lord, you know, I was in a, a real deep, poor, dark place. And he came, and, and he and he came into my life, you know. And when I got into the Word of God, he brought me to Jeremiah, and you know, it blew my mind even more because just like he said to Jeremiah, he says, "Before you were in your mother, womb, I knew you." I'm like, really? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> you know, right? But it's like, wow, you knew me. So that you know, what I mean, so then there's there's things that when you really come to understand. You're like, wow, you've been here this whole time and been blessing me, putting people in my path to bless me and give me things even when I didn't have. So to understand that, wow, I'm really, really rich in spirit because why? Once I really understood that he was there, it was nothing for me to give my life to him. Because I'm like, listen, you have been there this whole time when my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my cousin all these different, my auntie, my uncle, all these people wasn't there. So when I gave my life to him and, 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 and gave it to my life to him full wholeheartedly, there was a blessing in me knowing that, listen, I'm poor without God. <laughs> I'm poor. I have nothing if I don't have him. And because I have him, I have whatever I need, right? Blessed are the poor in the spirit. But understand that, listen, it says, blessed are you poor for, you, for yours is the kingdom of God. When we really looked at when Jesus really was, was really doing his ministry, who did he go to? He went to the people in the street and that was poor. Nine times out of ten, the people that really a lot of the religious really didn't really didn't pay attention to. Really was like, all right, get out of my face, get out of my way. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they you know, they wasn't invited to any of these different uh situations that they had going on. They it wasn't 
it wasn't preferred over someone who had that was dipped in gold in a sense. They had all of the, the you know, they were smelling good, looking good, you know what I mean, driving good, or whatever. He wasn't driving at the time, but you understand what I'm saying. You know, at the end of the day, you know, they had it all going on, so they was preferred, right? You know, but when they you know they probably ain't smelled all the good, look all of that good, the clothes wasn't all of that, right? But Jesus didn't allow that to stop him from being with them, right? He said, I came for those who know that they're sick, right? I call, I come for those who, who need a doctor, who wants a doctor, all right? Because it's a difference between need and want. A lot of people, all of us need God, but how many of us want God, right? So he came for those who want him, right? So he was, and he was there, and those that wanted salvation, wanted love, wanted peace, wanted joy, wanted his presence, he came and he gave to them because he said, for the, for you, listen, this is this is what I'm here for. This is what the kingdom of God is for you, right? But I, I want um once I, I want us to go and dive into the Deuteronomy, right? Because one thing we gotta always know that uh, you know they, 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 in, the, in college they said uh there's, in the Bible, there's a deuterismic, a deuterismic theme, right? There's a theme where it's like it really a lot of things hang, hang off of Deuteronomy when you really look at, you know, a lot of the things that God was talking about, Come you on, know, teach. and we're going to be diving into uh, one of my favorite books today, too, is Proverbs, because, you know, Proverbs for me as a young man taught me how to really be, man. It taught me a lot of different things, but this is where he was correcting me on some of my behavior. And, you know, some of my mindsets, you know what I mean, to the poor, right? So let's, one, get get get, get this situation, right? Because like I was saying, sometimes we want to really be uh, uh, around, you know, different people. But it's like, is this is, is this people who God called you to? I mean, right? We all have ministry. We all have different things. But one thing I want us to really understand as believers, right, what are we, who are we called to? Because it's clearly set out in the word, right? But sometimes we miss it. Like, right, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But yeah, this is this is a specific situation that he's saying, listen, these are the things that God called you to, right? You know what I mean? The poor, right? You know what I mean? The least of these, right? I mean, the orphan, right? So let, let's just dive in, man. Let's really dive in. So let's go to Deuteronomy 15. And we're going to start at verse 7. And I want you to understand, because listen, I, even from the beginning of like when he was really just uh, teaching his uh, the children of Israel, he always had a sense of charity or an understanding that he was teaching them to make sure that they did not uh, do wrong to the poor. And always had a mindset to really, you know what, do something, do, do right to the poor. You know what I mean? Right? So we're going to go uh, Deuteronomy 15, verse 12. All right. If there is among you a poor man of your brethren within any of the gates in your land, which it, which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brother, but you shall open your hand wide to him and willingly lend him sufficient for his needs, whatever he need. Turn to your neighbor and say, whatever he need, right? <laughs> right? Okay. But where at least there be, but where at least there be a wicked thought in your heart saying the seventh year, the years of release, right? You saying, oh, you poor, you need to go into bondage. Because right before it, it talks about, you know, those people, you know, going through situations if they was to serve, you know, you know, they need to come into you know, serve, and after seven years, they should be done. But he's saying, no, 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 listen, if they poor, right, listen, don't put this in there, in your heart. Don't have this mindset in your heart, right? It says, the seventh year, the year of release is at hand, and your eyes be evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing, and he cry out to the Lord against you, and it becomes sin amongst you. You shall surely give him, and your heart shall not be grieved with when you give to him. But for this thing, the Lord your God will bless you in all your works in all to which you put your hands. 
for the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore, I command you, saying, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor, your needy in your land, right? So one thing we need to understand is that God has a, a heart for people that are in need, right? And I really want to really say that, listen, uh, charity is not uh, uh, something that you can just, you know, it's not, okay, it's not a, it's, it's a necessity. It should be priority, right? It's a necessity, but also it's a priority amongst the believers because, it, you know what I mean, as we continue to go on, it tells you, you know, when we do what we, the service that we're supposed to serve, right? You know what I mean? What happens when we when we when we serve and we bless? We just heard it right here. Listen, you know what I mean? You want blessings? A lot of us like, yo, why is these things are not working? Why is this not? You know what I mean? We got businesses, we got this and that, organizations, we got all these different things that we trying to do, right? And we wondering like, why is this not working? This is says, have you been blessing the poor, right? Right. So let's let's dive in, right? Um. We're gonna be uh, going to Proverbs right now. One of the, one of my good. I love this, this book because it's you know the book that help a man be a man. I really you know help a woman be a woman too. I mean let you know you know, but um it definitely got a got a lot of good stuff that we need to really be into and consistently diving into because it definitely just helps with everyday life, man. You know because we don't know everything we need to know, and sometimes we got situations going on and we like yo how do I deal with this. The word of God, man, definitely. You know, I mean, if this word is blessing you, man, show some likes, show some love, man. Definitely uh, thank you for your support, man. Um, definitely. So check this out. We in Proverbs 19, 17, right? And we're gonna be quick with this with these Proverbs, right? It says, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. Come on, wow. Listen, man, listen. I want you to say, listen. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord. When I saw this, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. What? You know, you know that my friend, listen, God is the, you know, God is, he cre he's the creator of all things, right? But he said, if we, right, his people, his children, if we lend to the poor, he said, we're lending to him. And he will pay back what he has given. Wow. Hmm. Because listen, how many listen? How many y'all done went and tried to get loans and they were like, ah, no, right? <laughs> ah, no, right? And it's like they be like, no. So how many of us have tried to lend to the Lord, right? I mean, this could kind of definitely dive it into another lesson. I, I mean, we're gonna talk about. Is being, you know, being partners with God. But that's some, that's a little later. We're going to put a parenthetical pause on that for later, right? But here we do see that, listen, it's like, yo, it's saying that by uh, what we're doing and the services we're providing to the poor, we're lending to the Lord. That's mind-boggling, right? That we can lend to God. What do we have to lend to God? <laughs> You know what I mean? They said, if I had 10,000 tongues, I can't even thank God enough. But he said, if we was able to really go and do services to the Lord, and we be lending to God, right? So it really dives in to really understand that, um, really the importance of what we what we should be doing as believers. You know, right? Because, like, listen, man, when I really look at a lot of different situations, and there's a lot of stuff going on right now, man. There's a lot of stuff in the earth around right now that's going on. And I truly believe that a lot of these things wouldn't even be as bad as it was if if his children, you know what I mean, i.e. me, you know what I mean, listen, I'm one of his children, will be on and then diving into the charity as we should be, you know, a little bit more. Things would be a lot better. I mean, why? Because it says blessed are the poor, right? How are they blessed? Because the children of God that God has, has raised up and has blessed should be a blessing as well to the people in the earth, right? <laughs> right? He don't bless us just to hold it, right? Right? And it's, 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 it's a scripture that says, you have not because you ask not, right? 
talking to us and how we really be not, you know, going and praying to the Lord. Because he, you know, he's our he's our father, right? But then there's another part that says, and then you also have not because you praying, but all your prayers are selfish. Whatever you asking for is only for you. It has nothing to do with helping someone else. Every time we're going to the Lord, it's something to be praying, Lord, help me, please. Lord, I need this. Oh, Lord, help me get me out of this. Oh, Lord, da, 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 right? Versus, Lord, can you bless this person? You know what I mean? We consistently, what? I, I, I want to be known for it, not just going and praying to the Lord just for what I need, right? Because, you know, listen, he says, cast all your cares unto me because I care for you. He does tell us, come to me, right? But also, there is another component where it's like, can you take some time to go and really pray for somebody else, right? And I have a testimony, right? I was in Texas. I was in Austin, Texas. Um, no, 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 San Antonio, San Antonio. Yeah, I was in San Antonio, Texas. And um, it was these guys out there, and they was witnessing, and they was doing, you know, they, you know, they, they, they witnessing, and, you know, they out there and evangelizing, you know, what they, they form of evangelizing. But the way they was evangelizing, it was like they, they beating people with the Bible. Oh, you're a sinner. You got to repent. You know what I mean? If, if, if you've ever stole, have you ever lied? Have you ever, hey, you're a sinner. You got to repent or you're going to go to hell. It's like, hey, hold up, bro. So he came to me, right? And you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, uh, uh, hey, he's like, this is where you just messed up, right? Because I, I go off on him, but I talk to him. He's like, oh, do you want, you know, do you know that you, you know, uh, you want to be saved? I'm like, bro, I'm already saved. How do you know? Because I gave my life to him. You know what I mean? He's a, he has saved me plenty of times. I consistently go to the Lord, right? And I kept really, you know, breaking it down to where is that, you know, because he was like Christian G checking me, right? I'm like, yeah, well, all right, I'll show you my Christian car, bro. There ain't no problem, bro, right? You know, but um, it got to a place where it was like, all right, now that I'll show you my car, let me flip this thing back up on you, right? You know, I'm like, listen, man, you're going to get more beast with honey than vinegar, my friend, right? No, people know the stuff that they do. They know that they right. sin, right? right? Now, listen, you do have people like, I don't sin, I don't do nothing. Well, I'm perfect. Hey, listen, <laughs> all right. But I really was like, listen, man, you will gain more people and you'll lead more people to Christ praying for them. More so, you praying on them, beating them down with the Bible, right? Right? So... I really was being I witness to him in that, de that that degree. And, you know, I was able to look at him from afar after walking away and seen him over and had his hand on somebody praying. And I'm like, wow, I was blessed by that. But listen, sometimes we could be poor in knowledge, right? To not have the right knowledge. And sometimes we operating out of ignorance and actually coming, <laughs> coming crazy, man. And it was like, yo, man, listen, these people do need God. But it's how you bring it. I mean, it's how you're going about what you're doing, man. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. You know? I mean, now, I'm not saying, listen. I mean, listen. I understand, listen. We, You know, Jesus, what he did is he always wanted to deal with the physical and the spiritual. So he also, he, I mean, he fed people. But he also knew, listen, I feed you. I got a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? I talk about your sin and I, I preach to you. And you know, the stuff started dwindling. So. Understand that, listen, you bring in and bring in information and preaching and teaching the people the truth. Hey, listen, it, 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 everybody ain't going to like it, right? But it's all about your uh, approach and, and knowing that, listen, we got to be submitted unto the Lord and be guided and submitted and lead with love, right? It's all about love, man. How are we uh, operating? Are we operating out of love or arrogance or pride or, or judgmentalness? You know, I had to, listen, I had to learn. A lot from 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 me walking and my early walk, because you know I didn't even see a lot of my judgment of this. Because you know, I mean, I was I was young. I was poor in knowledge because I'm thinking this is how I gotta do it. You know, I gotta come, I gotta come all aggressive. I gotta come all, uh, you know. But you know, are you being good or you? I mean, doing good. You know, what I mean, you staying out of trouble. It's like I don't even know what, what's going on in their life. How am I coming to ask them and they staying out of trouble? Am I not staying out of trouble? You know what I mean? You know, so. You know what I mean? But, you know, I thank God for the humbling. Because, listen, he humbled me, and I was able to really go and, see, and go to different places and really truly see a lot of the things that we make make people and make them guilty for, they not guilty for. Things that be a judge for, there's some things that they shouldn't even be judged for. You know what I'm saying? Things that they need help with, 
they just need a little correction, a little guidance, a little direction, more so people, you know what I mean, judging them and, and throwing them off and casting them away aside to the wayside, right? You know, so one of the things that I um, definitely want to uh, dive in as, as well is uh, Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, 26. And it says, he who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely be delivered. Right? He who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes of many curses. Ooh. Wow. The one before, and I didn't even think that that kind of led into the second one, but it does very, very uh, deeply because it says, right, he who trusts his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered, right? And to be wise, right, is he who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many right? And understand that, listen, sometimes we, you know what I mean, listen, there's another scripture that says, you know, uh, not, uh, do not deprive good from your neighbor when it is in your power to do so. Somebody's situation, just by giving them something, helping them, listen, listen, do it. Be led, be led by God. Listen, let me, because listen, listen, how, how many times, like, I know sometimes God would like, go. Oh, Give somebody your last five dollars. My last five dollars. <laughs> but um, once I, I mean, it was one time I get. I mean, I, I, he told me to talk to somebody. I talked to him, and you know, he was like, "Man, thank you for talking to me." Now I was going through stuff, man, and you just took my mind off, and I feel a lot better. And then at the end of that, he like, "Yo, give him five dollars." I'm like, "Oh, that's my life." I'm like, you know, we talking in our spirit, in our head, like, "Oh, that's my last five dollars." You show me about that five. Like give it to him. I'm like, ah, you know, that's you know, it's obedience. Sac you know, obedience is sacrifice. Obedience is sacrifice, right? So I give it to him. He's like, bro, you want to get it to me for real? I said, wow, man. He says, yo, I got this jacket. Now, mind you, previous before, I was already in my head like, yo, I need a new jacket, man. You know, I wasn't praying, but I mean, I was just saying, you know, and. This guy gave me a brand new jacket. It was like worth a hundred dollars. It was like two jackets in one, <laughs> and it came out of my obedience, man. Right? I didn't, I didn't do that for that, but as a result of doing that, like it says, when you lend to the Lord, He will reward you back with what you get, right? And it's always, it's always, it, it, it's exactly what I needed. It's exactly what I needed at that moment in time. I needed the jacket. So at the end of the day, I was given a jack, you know what I mean? And, and, and it didn't matter. Like, I, I really had to understand of, like, yo, when I was really um, obedient to really just blessing people that was going through situations of poverty, of whether they just was, you know, they, they didn't have uh, uh, situations emotionally going on. They had situations going on in their family. Even they didn't have no money, you know what I'm saying? Being, you know, going through that, you know what I mean? The Lord blessed me because while I was obedient to really bless somebody, man, and he consistently, constantly did that, you know? And then really, and this is where, you know, when I would have been praying for a lot of uh, a nice little while, like, God, what are you, what are you guiding me? What you guiding me to do? And he guided me to this, like, listen, man, um, I want you to start to help problem with that, man. Because listen, man, look, my journey began in the shelter. And I mean, I, I, you know I mean? I had to leave my family on some Abraham type stuff because Listen, God called Abraham out of his family and really, before he started really, you know, telling him what he was, you know, going to do for him. You know I mean, there was different things that he was telling him to do before he, he prophesied and told him, okay, I'm going to bless you. And he even renamed him and all that, right? Tashing away from his family, right? And I had to leave my family and then I went to the shelter. And in the shelter, man, you know, I gave my life to God right there because I was in there realizing while I was in the shelter, like, wow, man. You've been here this whole time, just being a blessing, man. 
And from there, my beginnings began. I was walking. I got my apartment. I got my little apartment, you know. And um, the guy sold the house. I had to go to the YMCA. And from being there and just doing what I was supposed to do, man, getting up, you know what I mean? I got blessed into a program that would enable me to be able to, uh, you know, go to school. It was paying for my apartment for a year. You know, that was just so, such a blessing. I wasn't even seeking after it. But, you know, God spoke to the, the pastor that was in charge of the program. And he said, look, him right there. <laughs> him downstairs. Him right there. I'm like, okay. You know, and, you know, that enabled me to be able to go um, to school out in New York and then be able to meet my bookie boo boos, right? But God was guiding the path the whole time. You know, it was His will, His way. He was guiding me. All I had to do was just listen, right? But the goal, goal was what? To be able to uh, be there and provide things, you know what I mean, and be for the poor. I was consistently just, I was around nothing for people. I was just going through poor situations. But, you know, He called me to be a blessing to them. And you know, he was at, he had an opportunity where we was uh, really uh, doing different ministries, like uh, uh, City Tribe, that was really just like a, a church that was really just specifically for people that was just outcasts. They wouldn't normally be accepted in the churches. Um, and then they had New York City Relief, where they was just offering. They would give them soup, bread, and different services that they would need. And out of those different ministries, then you know the guy that was really in charge of that. At birth to hip hop ministry, you know, street hip hop church. Well, first it was named Noise, and then it was street hip hop. But um, from that, you know, I mean, that like dealing with and, and, and providing and doing things for the poor really, came, you know, is a part of my DNA because I understood, you know, I had to learn and understand. Listen, you know, when you're growing up, you don't know that you're poor. You're going through different poor situations. Why is this like this? And then you had to really understand. Oh, because you don't have this and this and that, right? But understand, there's many things that could make somebody poor. Not having their father in their life, that makes somebody poor. Not having their mother in their life, that makes them poor. Not, I mean, having family in their life, that makes them poor. Not having support, you know what I'm saying? Friends, you know what I'm saying? You know, different services to be able to provide some of the things that they need. Not having health care, you know what I mean? A, a lady can could be poor because her husband I have just died or something or left or whatever, man. Listen, you know what I mean? Whatever the situation that happened in people's life, man, listen, man, it doesn't matter. The only thing that does matter is that we be obedient to the call of the Lord in our lives to what? Be there for people, man. Truly, truly be there for people, man, right? And and and, and I know we've been recently going through this situation where people been riding and, and, and marching and understanding, but, you know, like civil rights is birthed out of the Bible. I really want you to check this out. There's other things in the Bible that we need to look at too, but one of the main scriptures I want us to really understand um, is Proverbs 31, eight, right? And it says, it reads, open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of, of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth judge rightly and plead the cause of the poor and need, right? And this is, I feel like he calls this for everybody because at the end of the day, you know, we in a day and age of social media where people will sit there and watch somebody on there and look at it, right? That's that's wicked, man. That ain't right, man. That ain't right, man. I want just to go check that situation right there. If you see me going through something, man, put that phone down and help your brother, man. I was going to help your boy, I. Help me out. Help me. Help me. Please. Help me. Please. All right? I mean, don't be sitting there filming. Oh, he all messed up. Look at him, man. <laughs> nah, man. That ain't right, man. That ain't right. Just to be looking upon a situation and seeing somebody in need but not providing them what they need in that moment. And that's help. I mean, for real. It says what? Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all of who are appointed to die. Right? This situation is going on that people have been uh, persecuting and they may be to death or a cause of a type of death where they assassinating that character or whatever it is in the situation going on. It says, plead the cause. It says, open your mouth, judge rightly and plead the cause of the poor and need. 
Because listen, sometimes, man, we never know. We might be the ones that need to be able to speak up and speak out for somebody that may not have it in there. They might what be down and out. They might not have the courage at that moment because they've been going through so much stuff and so much situations that what they 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 depleted. They bankrupt, right? Poor, they bankrupt. They ain't have. They don't have no more gas. They ran out of gas, right? I've been there. Listen, I've been there, man. Trust and believe your boy. I've been there. But listen, I think that all the time. Speak out, she pray, she talk, and speak to me and tell me stuff that I need to hear. I mean, in order and and she, listen, when, when my job was doing crazy stuff, she was there. I mean, take making sure I was good. So I thank God for the woman of God right there. You know what I'm saying she is definitely when you go after this this situation, a virtuous woman. Come on now, come on. I mean, turn your name and say virtuous woman, right? Now listen, definitely. Like, look, go sit down, go sit down. Now. As we can take as we digress, right? We take care of the poor, the Lord, right? I want you to know when you start when you do this, what the meaning of and what you will be considered as once you are actually taking care of the poor and taking care of the cause of the poor, right? It's uh Proverbs 29 7, right? It says Says the righteous consider the cause of the poor, but the wicked does not understand such knowledge, right? The righteous considers the cause of the poor, right? But the wicked does not understand such understanding, such knowledge, right? Now we need to understand that, right? If those who who actually consider and take care and do things and help the poor considered righteous in the sight of the Lord. But it says, when you can't even understand what somebody go through, I mean, right? It calls you wicked. That you like, ah, you know what I mean? And that would, and I want you to, I want to bring this deeply into the situation. When we look at people and see them in a situation and can't understand it, but then we judge them like, ah, oh, ah, oh, it's good for them. That's just part of the you don't know. You don't know what, what they've been through, man. You know what I'm saying. It's, 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 you know what I mean, the same thing when we just read. Listen, you know what I mean. If you see somebody poor, help them. Don't think in your mind. At least it says, at least wicked thoughts come in your mind about them, right? So we need to. I really want. Uh, I really hope that this word really brings a different perspective and understand this because I listen. Even the other day, listen. I had to check my, my brother when my brother was walking. I'm checking. I said something. About by the guy, right? And and my and, and my brother said something like, "I don't want to do that because man, that ain't you know I could definitely be in that and it, and and it quickened me, it checked me right there. Like you know what, bro? You definitely right, man. You know what I'm saying by the grace of God, there go I. You know what I mean? Right? To understand, we don't know what got them there, man. Nine times out of ten, when you go and talk to some people that's definitely poor, they've been in some of the richest people you ever met in your life. You be like, what happened, man? What happened? You have that money, man? What happened? Somebody died. Something happened. You know what I mean, to their husband, their wife, or whatever. Or they just got tired of all of this stuff, or they got so deep in the situation that they saw the wickedness of it and there wasn't no parts of it. You don't never know, man. I mean, they've been in a crazy situation and they probably lost their mind after seeing what they see. You know what I'm saying, all right. I thank God because I don't see. I went. I went to work. I don't see some, some stuff that was like, "Whoa, what's going on up in there, man? <laughs> man, is this over here?" You know. But at the end of the day, I thank God for being able to come and go and see all the different situations. Like, listen, like a man going to war. Man, go to war. He's shell shocked, man. Nine, a lot, look, nine times other people that's that's definitely poor or what veterans, man. I mean, that's part, that's one of the reasons I didn't even want to go. And, and, and serve it in the army because I'm like, bro, these people go and risk their life and you come back and they still be in a, a destitute state. This is this is the things you give to these people, right? And a lot of them are veterans and we be treating them like like garbage. That is not right, man. That's <laughs> not right. Because you ain't go to you ain't go over there to that to, to, to do all that, you know? So man, listen, we you know I mean I really hope that pray that we have a different mindset about not just about how we view the poor but our duty right to, to serve and be there and help the poor right and be there to, to what i mean show the love of god 
to show them that blessed are the poor, right? But they're the kingdom of God, because why? These are the people that God told us to really be there for. Why? Because when we was in our moment, listen, when I was in my moment and I didn't know what was going on, God dropped angels, people out of nowhere to bless me. Bless me. Give me money when I was, I just lost my job. I'm all down and out. Somebody just come and drop me, hit me with $40. I'm like, you sure you want but I had to realize it was a time he told me to give a lady $10, right? And I'm like, all right, I'm going to give it to her. And this lady literally, like, lost her whole mind. And I'm like, no, all right, just, no, just take the money. But I don't know what that was and a confirmation, right, to, to, to God talking to her, telling her that he's going to be there for her, right? We don't understand how when we go and we do and, and be obedient to, to what God called us to, how that's, I mean, proving God real in somebody else's life. God proved to me that he was real, right? When when people would come out of nowhere, when I didn't know where I was at, I was going through so much stuff in life, man, and I was just, I, I was away from my family. It was going on, bro. I was away from my family. I didn't have nobody there. But out of nowhere, you had these people. I call them angels, right? Because why? They was being obedient to God and really just doing what God called them to, to do, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I try to strive to be. I ain't perfect, man. You know what I'm saying? But I try to do that because I understood. Listen, I understand what it means to be with nobody being there, man. Nobody, you know what I mean? It's just like, bro, it's, the Bible says there's, there's family that won't be there, but there's a, you know, there's a friend that sticks strong, that sticks closer than a brother. And I had people like that. Now, when I was, you know, like one of my brothers, my brother, uh, Brad, Brad Marshall, bam, I'm over here name dropping it. Listen, man, if it wasn't for his family being there and taking me in, you know what I'm saying? That's why I had to learn how to, you know, take people in every now and then. Right? We're going to talk about that real quick, right? We're going to drop on that. You know, but I thank God for them because, listen, if it wasn't for that, man, I don't know what I would have been through. You know what I mean? Could have been dead in the street, man. You know what I mean? Yo, thanks for the love, bro. Thanks, thanks for the love, man. I appreciate it. Definitely. But listen, man, we about to dive in. And um, one thing we just like talking about, like, oh, he said, you know what I mean? Whoever, uh, where we at? I lost my way. <laughs> no, but it says, those that help the poor and, and that do for the poor, he considers you righteous. If you uh, don't, if you over here looking at them and don't care and ignore them, and he calling you wicked, right? And then the next thing I want to really talk about is how we treating them, right? Because some people be doing some real crazy stuff with people that's poor, man. And I mean, let's let's talk, let's think on that, man. Let's really look at what, what they talk about. I see people really beat up homeless people or do fire. It's crazy stuff that it shouldn't happen, man. It shouldn't happen, man. Right? Right. So this is um, Proverbs 14, 13. And you know this, listen, Proverbs is is is, is ripping us about the poor. It's talking a lot about the poor, right? Talking a lot because it was it is really trying to instill a sense of understanding of righteousness in in us, man. Definitely, man. So check this out. Proverbs 14, 31, right? And it reads, He who oppresses the poor reproach his maker, but he who honors him have mercy on the needy. Now, what they saying is. When you over here doing things to oppress the poor, whether it's word, deed, action, policy, business plans, you know what I'm saying? Um, whatever it is, right? Yeah, that's my Poli yeah, policy. Policies, procedures, right? You know what I'm saying? Right? It says you are reproaching your maker, the one who made you. You're doing, you, you, you causing, you reproach. It's reproach is like, man, listen, you, 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 you're doing something wrong, right? But it says, when we are do good to the poor, we're honoring, we bring honor to our maker, to the one who made us, man, right? So it's like, yo, we be wanting to like, Lord, I want to praise you, I want to bless you, and this and that. Listen, man, what are we doing? Our actions, our word has to match what we, <laughs> our, our actions, man. We say we want to honor God, we want to bless God. All right, who you bless? You want to bless God, who you bless? You know what I'm saying? You want to show, you want you, you want to, you know, show that you got, you know, good, good you want to, that you are the righteous, or you the great, 
And they said, those who want to be the greatest have to serve the most. Those that want to go up, you got to go down. You got to humble yourself. Be a servant. Because I mean, the world sees something different. Oh, you want to go out there, you got to be the best and people got to do for you. I mean, you don't got to do nothing. I mean, but listen, and, and I mean, listen, in the kingdom, down is up versus up down. You know what I'm saying? Down is up, you know? And you got, it's a humility that he's saying, like, listen, you want to you want to you want to you want to honor your your maker. You want to honor the one who made you. I'm saying, bless the poor man. Bless those who need. I mean, try to meet a need. I mean, and listen, you ain't even gotta go far, man. We got plenty of people in our life that we can definitely like, yo. How can I help you, man? You know I'm saying, because everybody everybody got situations in their life that listen. There's a poor situation. There's a need there, and listen. But this is what goes on in in, in our everyday life, right? I mean, we, we, I mean, we like, listen, we don't ask no time. Hey, we, hey, listen, man, he ain't even, he ain't saying nothing. So, hey, man, obviously he ain't need it. That's a lie, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, he all right. How you know if you didn't investigate it yourself? I truly listen, and, and, and I definitely, plenty of times I had to repent because I had to really truly understand, listen, man, people be going through a lot of different situations, man. Don't say nothing going through it by themselves. And and it hurt me sometimes even to know that even my own family go through different stuff and I don't even know nothing about it. But listen, I gotta start what coming out there and being just learning. I gotta learn how to to, to be more approachable and, and to communicate better because that's my biggest problem. I gotta learn how to communicate. I mean, and sometimes people ain't gonna tell you they're going through something if you ain't if you don't know how to take things or you don't know how to communicate properly. Or you don't know how to act sometimes, right? You know what I mean? And I go through that, man. Listen, I go through that definitely. You know what I mean? That's why I listen. I'm a big knucklehead. The Lord deals with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? He definitely put me in timeout corner sometimes. He chastises me. But I thank God because he, he chastises those he loves. And I thank God for what he does. You know what I mean? But he chastises me because I'm his child, man. I mean, listen, it's only, he, he the one that got me, man. You know, he got me. But hey, every now and then, I ain't perfect, man. I go through different situations. But this is why, as we read in this stuff, this is this is that I definitely take this to heart because this is you know I've been praying, hey right, Father, what what are you calling me to? What am I supposed to be doing? He's like, oh, come on, right? So we're gonna dive more um, into that. But and listen, okay, oh yeah, you know what I mean. We coming to the end. We are gonna break it to the end. We are gonna have a grand finale up in this situation, right? But um. One of the things I um, want to definitely, if you get a chance, man, go to Isaiah 58, 6 and 9. Because it definitely um, breaks down. A lot of us talking about fasting, right, spiritually, to grow spiritually. But Isaiah actually helps you understand, okay, when you're fasting, these are some of the actions and things you need to be doing while you're fasting to make it a legit spiritual fast, right? Because you want to do all these different things after the Lord, but still be fleshly, right? In our spirit. But it's like, listen, deny yourself, right? I mean, the Lord says, I mean, deny yourself and follow me. What does that mean, right? Put away some things that you want to do, right? It's a lot of things we want to do. Some things we want to eat. You know, many places we want to go. But like, listen, what if a day you like, listen, I ain't going to eat what I want to eat. Go to the rest of my want to rest go to fasting day, but also I'm going to go out and I'm going to help somebody and bless somebody. I'm saying I'm going to go and feed the poor. I'm going to go in a soup kitchen. I'm going to go find some clothes and go, I mean, I'm going to go buy, you know what I mean? Take some money, take $500 and go buy some stuff and give it out. You know what I'm saying and bless somebody's life. You know what I'm saying that need it. I'm going to go hit somebody off, pay a bill for somebody, right? You know what I'm saying do something that wouldn't I wouldn't normally do, right? Because who coming out of their pocket going to pay somebody else bill, right? You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, look, sometimes you don't know what that will mean for somebody. It's like a fresh, you know what I mean? Like a good, you know what I mean? Uh, drink of water to somebody in the desert. Like, bro, I've been waiting for this cup of water, you know, that break down and cry. And it's not even for that. But it's like, yo, sometimes, man, we need to really learn to be the relief, man, that God called us. Because when we needed it. He give us relief, but we can't do that for nobody else. That ain't right, man. That ain't right. And I speak that to myself, man. I'm, listen, all of this, a lot of this, these sermons, I want y'all to know, listen, man, it's that the word of God is a double blade sword, man. It cuts, you know what I'm saying? 
cutting down to the soul and the marrow. That is double bladed because it's not just cutting you, it's cutting me too. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It's cutting me too. But understanding it, it helped me understand what am I to be doing? All right? Because we, we want to do so. I want to do so much. I want to build it. I want, what you want to build it for? You ain't doing that. <laughs> you want all this stuff, but you ain't doing nothing, man. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, bro. But listen, if he can trust you with these things, that listen, if I bless you, he said, I, you will be, you've been faithful with few, so I can bless you with many because with the little that you had, you did a lot, right? So I want to go and, and, and start to end out what I'm, you know, what we're talking about to really help us to really check our, our walk with the Lord because a lot of the things that we think God is looking at and all care about, he ain't caring about, but the stuff that he do care about, we need to get that together. <laughs> get it to get, pick up the pieces, right? <laughs> for real, for real. I mean, it maybe it may sound funny, but it's real for real. We gotta pick it up. Cause listen, man, it doesn't matter whether we eat in, whether we in the building, or we on our own accord in our house, man. Listen, we are the temple. We are the church. I'm saying the people. He says that His Spirit is dwelling inside of us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when it comes down to the situations. What do we need a builder for if we got to go? You know what I mean? You don't need a building to build. Oh, I like that. That's a bar. <laughs> That's a bar right there. We don't need a building to build. But if you're going to get a building, you better be building for the kingdom, right? So check this out. Matthew 25. This is my last scripture, and then we about to take it home. All right, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, right? Okay. All right. Father, I pray that you would add a blessing to this word. The victors give us give us life through this right here, Father. It says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall then he will sit on the throne of glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a sheep divides his sheep from the goats, right? Everybody want to be a goat, right? I want to be a sheep. <laughs> Hold up. Oh, I'm the goat. All right, bro. All right, keep on talking about that. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. But check this out. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom Prepare for you from the foundations of the world. For I have, for I was hungry and you gave me food. Wow. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Wow. 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 Wow, you know what? I want to, you know, speaking on that last one, right? I'm going to talk about it. I was in prison and you came to me. I, I just got finished working out of the prison system. And you were, you, were, you know, we think that, oh, yeah, of course, there's, there's Christians in there going, bringing services. <laughs> Bro, we ain't, we're, we, listen, we in there working more in there than, than we bringing the, you know, working for the Lord, we working for the system more than we working for the Lord. But we gonna just, you know, that's just neither here nor there. But this, this, you know, I just wanted to put a pause on that. But let's continue in this word real quick. Let's get to this word, right? All right. It says, "Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger?" and take you in, or naked, and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick, or in prison, and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, in as much as you did to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Wow. Whoa. Come on now. Right there. Wow. That's heavy. Right? Then he will also say to those on the left hand, 
depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick in prison and did not minister to you? Then he said, answer them, saying, surely I say to you, and as much as you did not do it to one of the least of them, you did not do it to me. And these will go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Wow. 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 Listen, man. Um, I don't know about you, man, but um, that definitely checks me deeply, you know, because, listen, man, there's moments where people was asking for help, and I'm like, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I have to check, look, and remember that. Even just listening to this, I'm like, dang, bro. <laughs> dang. I did, you know, I did what wasn't right in the Lord's sight. Even if he said, you seen him having nothing and you didn't, even if you ain't taking them into my house, did I find them somewhere to go? Did I find clothes for them? If they needed something, did I get them something to eat? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I listen, I poor people that be like, listen, I ain't going to give you no money, but I'll come and buy you some food if you're hungry. Are you thirsty? I'll give you something to drink. Because why? Me giving you money doesn't have anything to do with me meeting the need. I could meet the need and not give you money for an addiction. You know what I'm saying, right? You know what I mean? But some people, I'm not going to give them the money for, listen, but listen, the Bible says, look, when you lend to the poor, you lend to God. But so, listen, maybe, maybe are we even spending any brain cells, you know what I mean, uh, uh, thoughts creatively to be able to like, oh, how can I be a blessing if I don't want to do it in this manner? How can I, what, provide boundaries that, that I don't be a stumbling block for what I believe in and what I truly feel like is good and bad, but so I can really truly be a blessing to somebody, right? You know what I mean? And sometimes we just give the, oh, no, I don't want to, you know what I mean, as an excuse not to help somebody, but truly indeed that that, that matters to the Lord, man. You know what I mean, how we what? You know what I mean, try to, to go out our way to, to help somebody, man. True indeed, man. So listen, man. And it's a, listen, like he said, look, look, we, 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 we feel like, oh, we think we're going to go to, go, he says, go into everlasting, go to eternity. You know what I mean? Bro, he, he literally just said, look, if you ain't taking care of people that I called you to take care of, you know what I'm saying, I consider you wicked. <laughs> I consider you, you know, a heathen. I consider you not one of my children because why? You're not doing what, what, well, one of my children would do. One of my children would make sure someone is fed, or make sure they get somebody something to drink, make sure they feed somebody, they, they, they clothe them. If they sick, go and see them in the hospital, in jail. Listen, you know how how much we lead people that be in jail to just, that's one of the things the Lord checked me on, man. If it wasn't for me going to jail, I would have never seen how judgmental I was. Because I was like, hey, 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 you do the crime, you do the time. You don't know what people did. What if they didn't do anything? Our savior was accused of some things he didn't do when they killed him, man. For real. So it was like, what world do we live in? Did, did it change any any <laughs> way from the time of ending now? No. We put it in the same jail. Know what I mean? Listen, I, I mean, listen, one of the things, and it was crazy, the one I, for me, because listen, my mother said, look, you go in there, bro, I am not coming. And that really that kept me, you know, that scared me. It hurt me though. I'll let you know it hurt me because you're like, oh, you ain't gonna come see me. <laughs> you ain't gonna see me though. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? But one thing it was crazy that, like, yo, I was like, yo, I stayed out of trouble, not to go in there, but God said, Yeah, I kept you out of trouble because I did stuff that I should have definitely been locked up for. Right? But he says, Yeah, you're not gonna go in that way, but you still gonna go in there. Because I need you to see your people, who the people you're called to, people that you're called to help. Called the minister to call, you know what I mean, to, to help and, and 
and help people in there. And at the end of the day, they were susceptible. They're here. You got people that, because there's a lot of Muslims and there's a lot of different religions in there. But like, listen, you got you got the Muslims in there. They take care of they, they take care of their own. But do we have services? It was times that I had to take out of my time and I had to do overtime just so I could make sure some people that wanted to go to church can go to church because, bro, they was in there and couldn't even go to church. Sometimes they wouldn't even have a Bible study. You know what I'm saying? If it had to be like one of the people inside and they had to be like, oh, come on, we about to do this Bible study. We about to stay right. Come on, bro. Come on. You know what I'm saying? But imagine that they didn't have that person in there and they going crazy and they family, they being there for them. You know what I mean? Imagine somebody right now, we ain't going to COVID-19. And they in the hospital and nobody ain't even coming to see him. But, oh, I don't want to catch. Hey, I don't want to catch that. Come on, man. I mean, God is really just saying, listen, man. A lot of the stuff we do is not human, right, man? It's not loving. I mean, it's anti. I mean, because, bro, if we going went through a lot of this stuff, we would want it to. A lot of us been through it, and we had we nobody there, bro. Nobody there, man. You know what I'm saying. So it's just like, yo, man. Really, I, I, I really pray. Where is that? Listen, man, we understand that. Listen, bro, we ain't got nobody but God, right? To know that, listen, man, look, you know, if we, if, if, if we lose everything today, our true inheritance is truly the Lord's, right? And as the Lord been there and be there for us and consistently, you know what I mean, provide and be praying for all these different blessings and we want this and that, and we pray. One thing that he wants us to do as well, go there and be, be there for somebody else. Just like people pray, pray for somebody else. There's people in the hospital, pray for them, man. There's people in the jail, man, go see them, man. And I mean, listen, I'm talking that to myself. I got a brother in jail. I got to go check and see what's going on with him, man. You know what I mean? For real. I mean, family in there. But listen, man, I just hope that, listen, man, this word was a blessing to you because, listen, man, blessed are the poor in spirit, for that, for that is the kingdom of heaven, man. Listen, man, you know that. Listen, bro, this whole this world ain't got nothing for us. It's, what profits a man that he gains the whole world but loses his soul? But if a, a soul know that, listen, my soul belongs to the Lord, you're eternally blessed, man. And from that eternal blessing comes other blessings because why? We now can provide other blessings to other people that he calls us to what? Go and bless the poor. That's why blessed are the poor because he calls his children to be a blessing to them, man. So I pray today that you could be a blessing to somebody that's going through, and you ain't even got to go that far, man. I mean, pray and ask the Lord, Lord, who you have me to bless? Or you can just pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you're like, oh, uh, hey, no, hey, they good. No, nah, you, because you don't want to help. You know what I mean? Be real. You know what I mean? So listen, man, listen. I love you guys, man. Hey, man, I hope that you're blessed by this, man. This was a... um. A very sobering word. It checked me, man. But it was a, it was really good because for me, you know, what I mean, one of the things that I'm really going to really be and try to expand in my ministry is, you know, what I mean, try to really start doing some more food stuff. You know, provide some things, the food pantry. You know what I mean, one of the other things that God was really just uh, showing me is really getting into like water facilities. You know, what I mean, clean cleaning water. You know what I mean, getting some stuff to clean water, provide clean water to people. It's areas that got water that's contaminated. And it's not right, you know what I'm saying? So that's something that you can definitely do. Because we talk about creative getting in the mindset. Somebody could be doing clothes pantries, collecting clothes, not just the business suits. Because, yeah, we do need people that can provide church clothes and suits and stuff so that they can go do business. But just regular clothes, you know what I mean? We do need people to go in the hospitals and, and go and pray for people or go visit somebody just to be like, oh, man, it was a blessing for you to come and just come see me, man. I mean, because sometimes they own family and come to see them because they fearful. Or I don't want to get sick. And then how that person feel? Like you make them feel like you know, they, they got the black plague or something. And they just going through something. They may not even have COVID or whatever. You know what I'm saying, but what happened when you go through that situation? You would want somebody to be there for you too, right? I mean, prison ministries. We need people to go in and be a blessing to somebody and go check out and, and see how they not just going. You know, go check your family. Go visit your family, right? But going in there, like, you know, we about to provide a, a, a Bible study. We about to go rap, sing, provide a church service or something, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Something. You need somebody to go get hot homes for the for the fatherless and the motherless. So people that just, I mean, it ain't got their family there, but needs a place just to, just, to, just to think, man. Just to have some time away from the streets and not be on the streets and have them 
persuade you in a negative route. If I ain't have people, my friends, like my brother Malcolm or my brother Terrence or my brother Bam, or we call him Bam or Brat, you know what I mean? Brat, they, if I ain't had a family there, man, to help me, man, I would not be here today. So this is why I do what I do, because I'm returning on investment. People bless my life, and this is why I do what I do, because I return on investment when I was poor and had nothing. <laughs> Out there, 16, with a T-shirt, <laughs> saying, ain't nothing, riding a bike from Edison to Roselle and Elizabeth. People bless my life, man. You know, and in return, it's my job to give it back, man. And even just COVID, even just thinking about people that's widows, I mean, people that's just old elderly, and they just meeting somebody coming, just sit there and talk and chill out, man. Hey, man, listen, man. That would do just, if you be like, yo, let me call them up and see how they're doing. Just a phone call. A bless somebody life, man. You ain't got to just give some money, although some money be out, be good. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because, listen, that's sometimes what we do, what we we be the Lord gotta test us the most with because we be gripping on ah, I'm good, bro. I'm good. You know what I mean? But listen, it says everything is the Lord's and thereof, man. He can, sometimes he tells us, look, tithe 10%, but you can tithe some time. You can go and tithe some listen, tithe is 10%. You got 24 hours in a day. You can go put two hours and 40 minutes to go help somebody out, go sit and chill out with somebody. I mean, go 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 donate some time to a young, young boy that ain't got a father there. I'm saying, donate some, some time to a young girl that ain't got a mother there. You know what I'm saying, come on, man. So, I really listen, man. I love you guys, man. I thank God for you, man. Thanks for joining me, man. And I just hope that you're blessed for our ministry. Um, I just pray that God continue to grow and increase us because these are the things that I really feel like oh, this is what God really wants us to do. Because if you're gonna have a building, we're gonna get to the, get to the works. You know what I'm saying, for real, for real. You know what I mean, listen, we don't, it says we don't work for the faith, but we have faith. Faith without works is dead, man. So listen, man. Hey, hey, shout out to my brother Satan, man. You know what I'm saying? Right there, Elemental Keys. All right. So listen, man, let's pray. And listen, man, I just hope you have a good one, man. So Father God, we just thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your correction, Father God. Thank you for, for your presence, Father God. And I want to, first and foremost, thank you for all of the things that you've blessed me with, Father God. For truly, Father God, I truly thank you for all the blessings that you have blessed me with, because I could have never, ever thought, or ever, ever asked you for any, any of this stuff, God. You have blessed me exceedingly and abundantly beyond all I would thank and ask for, Father God. So I thank you that you've given us everything pertaining to life and godliness, Father God. I just pray that we don't hoard all of these things, even the word of God that you put in us, hoard the knowledge, hoard, Father God, the money, Father God, the connections, the wisdom, the guidance. Father God, I pray that we be, Father God, just doers, not hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And go out and bless the world that you called us to. Now, sister, when we say, God, why are you letting this happen? And you come back to us, and why are you allowing this to happen? I've given you this world for them to manage. So why aren't you, why are you allowing this to happen? So help us to be more active in the earth realm, to be a blessing to your people, who you called us to. So, Lord, I thank you and ask all these things to be done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man. So, listen, I love you guys, man. We about to be back on here next week, same time, same back channel. And listen, man, I love you. Amen. Listen, welcome to Issachar Ministries International, man. We love you guys. All right? Deuce. Yeah. Bless it, Yo, Shatan was going ham. Hey, he down his, uh, uh, you know we got another fan in our room, right? I know. We got to put down this 